Hey, my name is Murray. Welcome to this video. Uh, last month, I did a video on how to do line animations like the bottle of media effect in After Effects and kind of add the glow to it and make it look really cool. Um, you've probably seen a lot of that in your feed recently, and that's why I did that. And since then, it's gotten quite a lot of attraction. And uh, a lot of people have asked, uh, please, can you do a simpler version? Because it's really hard to follow along. So this is kind of a basic step by step on how to get that system going so that you make those effects look good and you know how to fix it because there's been a couple of issues with your brush and things like that that I've seen people in the comments with. So I'm going to address a couple of those and also just show you some really cool effects you can do with that. Oh, and before you forget, consider subscribing because there is another similar tutorial coming in the future. A lot of people have asked about how to do this effect on text. So it looks cool and stuff with the motion and the dancing and things like that. But people also want to know how to do it in text. And so I'm going to do another video on that in the near future. So stick around for that if you're interested. This is a basic tutorial. This isn't for those uh, complicated guru After Effects geniuses. Um, this is just to kind of help people get off the, the base essentially and just get started. So without further ado, let's jump in. Okay, so here we are in After Effects and I've got my whole composition set up here, 1920 by 1080. I've got my video footage here and you can see it's just Tim dancing. I believe this is Tim. Um, thanks Tim for letting me use the footage as well in my last video. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate the background with Control D. I'm going to lock the background because we need to keep our background clean with no edits to it. And so then what we're going to do is we're going to just change the color of this to green so that I know that I should only be editing the green one because in the past I've edited the other one by accident and after that I realized that I did the wrong one so I had to undo all my work. So with that background layer locked I'm going to have my green layer selected. What I'm going to do is I'm going to double click it. Double clicking it will open this layer box. I'm just going to drag it to the side here just so that I have them side by side. This is the real time over here and this is where I'm going to add my brush effect to it. Oh and don't forget go ahead and follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash mariofrost. I do a lot of live streaming there. Come say hi. Link is in the description. So this box is just the layer here. This composition is the whole composition over here put into one. Anything that's on this layer is only going to appear on here. Any effects on any other layers will not appear in this layer tab. It will appear in the composition tab. So just one thing to note, if I make any edits to this layer in the layer tab, it'll show up on here in this composition tab. However, if I make any edits to any other layer, then it will not show up in this layer tab. Now with this selected, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my brush tool up here. You can do control B for the shortcut. And then what I'm going to do is let's just make this a little bigger and I'm going to hold alt and I'm going to zoom in or you can just zoom in without alt. It doesn't matter. And then one important thing here is your brushes tab. So if you don't have your brushes tab selected, just go to a window and you can go to brushes over here and you can select that. So with my brushes tab selected, I've got my diameter at two. I'm going to leave angle at zero and I'm going to keep the roundness at 100%. If I take it down, it, the thing starts to turn into an oval. Let me show you what I mean by that. So I'm just going to take that up. You can see this is a circle. If I take the roundness down, you can see it's not so much of a round shape anymore. So if I just click once, you can see that. If I take it up to 100, click once, you can see the difference. So that's also unique to different situations. You might want to use it, but generally I don't use it that much. So if I undo that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the diameter to 3. I usually hover between 3 and 5. It just depends on what type of effect you want to get. And I'll show you the different ones that you can achieve. Now you can adjust the size if you have a tablet. So if you're using a tablet to draw in After Effects, you can use pen pressure. And the harder you press, the bigger or smaller it'll get and vice versa but I'm going to keep it off because I'm just using my mouse and you can do the same for any of these others the angle the roundness the opacity the opacity is actually a good one you can use pen pressure if you're using a, a tablet but again I don't have that so I'm going to keep those all off it's not going to matter if you have a mouse then in my paint tab again if you don't have it go to window and you'll find it in there in my paint tab, I'm going to keep it 100%. I'm going to keep the mode normal. I'm going to keep it RGBA. And this is important. The duration needs to be single frame. If you have constant, it's going to be on the composition the whole way through, no matter where you are. 
So keep that in mind. If you want to only have it in one frame, you're going to do single frame. So if I draw and go one frame down, it disappears. Now this is the tedious part of the job is you got to do it frame by frame. But in this situation, frame by frame is the best way to go to make it look good. But it does take a lot of work, a lot of time, and definitely a lot of practice because it won't look good the first time you do this effect. It's gonna have to take a bit of practice for you to get it to look right because you gotta get some physics correct and some of the motion and maybe just some people aren't that great at drawing. I'm not that great at drawing either. And so practice is just gonna be a huge thing. Now note one thing, if I draw here, you'll see it appear live in the composition tab. So usually the reason why I have them side by side instead of just them together like this and just use it full screen is because I can preview what it'll look like in the final composition at the same time. So usually I have this zoomed out to have the full composition so I can do fit and it'll fit the composition. Now I can zoom in over here. Let's just drag this down so that I have even more space. I can zoom in and I can go close up, do the edit and you'll see it appear up here and you can see it from a wide perspective. And now just to start with a basic effect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find my spot in the video where I feel like I'm gonna have a cool effect. Let's just, uh, so he's got a body ripple here, use, let's use that. So I'm gonna start right about over here and let's just add some cool wisp kind of effect through the whole thing. So I'm gonna do a time lapse here real quick and you'll see what I'll talk about. But each time I'm gonna drag through. So let's just start it from the back here and I'm gonna bring it out through the front. And I'm only gonna do it a little bit. I'm not gonna do a huge line. In fact, I'm gonna do it smaller than that. So make it look like it's coming out from behind him. I'm gonna make the front a little bigger and then I'm gonna bring it back into its same spot here. So the back is a little smaller than the front. Let's do that a bit more. Okay, so that looks good. Now I'm gonna use page down to go one frame ahead in time. And then I'm just gonna draw that again and I'm gonna make sure the back is a little thinner and I'm gonna make the front a bit thicker. Let's keep going more, maybe a little more. And I'm just gonna round the front over a little bit. Okay, so you can see in the main comp here that it is updating. So if I go page up, it'll go back one frame. It'll go back to the first one I did. Page down, you can see what that looks like. So if I just go between the two, you can see there's a bit of movement there if you look on the main comp here. And so I'm just gonna do this frame by frame and you can watch the whole thing. And then once I'm done with this, then I'll get back to you. All right, so now that I've done the hard stuff, you can see it looks pretty decent. Let me just play it back real quick. So you can see it's pretty fast, right? Sometimes you want that and sometimes you don't. It just depends on the different effect. With this effect specifically, I think it's okay because it looks pretty cool. And once we add the colors and stuff, it'll look nice. But sometimes you wanna have it slower. So the way you have it slower, if this is too fast for you, Here's what you would have to do. So let me just go back into where it, it starts out here. You can see that, let's see if this is the first one. Yeah, so this is the first one, right? Now I say this is a pretty good size, but on the next frame, you can see it goes down there. Instead of making it this far out, maybe I would instead uh, look at the previous frame. Okay, so let's go halfway down. So halfway down, I go a frame forward and let's just draw that one, right? So that's maybe where I should have drawn that if I wanted to make it slower. All right, I'm just gonna undo that. And then in the next frame, you can see it goes all the way out here. Maybe I'll halve that to make it go that instead of that, right? And so sometimes it just means doing it a little shorter distance. That way you'd have more frames to go before you get to the destination where it turns and then it comes out the other side again. Now this, uh, this technique is applied to pretty much any other way if you wanna extend the life of the effect on screen so if it's too fast just add more in between frames in between let's say this is point a and then this is point b just add more between those two or just make them shorter or last longer or even overlap right so let's say for example that you have this frame here let's say the next frame okay it's down here but you can see over here 
that it's not overlapping so much. So if I go down and up, you can see there's not a whole lot of overlap. So let's say this is my frame here and I want to go down, but then I should start here instead. So that when you see it go up and down between the two frames, you'll see there's some overlap. And I obviously wouldn't have some of this at the end here, right? So a little thing is just like that is how you would extend or reduce the life depending on which way you want to go. So the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to go to a window and we're going to go find our effects tab, effects and presets, and we're just going to type in glow. I'm just going to drag the glow onto the layer that I've been editing. You can see it adds glow to everything. Don't worry, we'll change that in just a second. So the color that I want it to be is I'm going to change this white to, let's say a reddish color. Next thing what you can do is you can go down into the layer here, open up the effects, open up the glow, or actually open up the paint. And with this paint on transparent, this needs to be on. That way it's only affecting this, not the whole composition. And then you can change the glow intensity, make it bigger or smaller. You can change the radius. You can see the different things it does here. And don't forget on the glow colors, have A and B colors. That way it'll shine more and it'll look much nicer. And then you can just change these top three effects here to make it look the way you want it to. Uh, let's mess around with this and see what we can get. Let's add a, yeah, it's a decent glow there. And let's say that looks pretty decent. So if I just close this for a second, you can see that the effect is on there. And uh, also take a look here. So if I just go into the timeline here, you can see all of these here. These are each individual strokes and there's a ton of them. There's 158 times I clicked, which is crazy just for this one effect here. And so that's more for the little bit of a, the advanced users. Uh, if you know what you're doing, you can do it. You can zoom in and you can actually drag these to, to separate them or delete them or anything like that. So I'm, I'm not gonna get into that. That's a bit more of a complex tutorial, but that's it at its bare bones. One other thing you can do if you want to, uh, let's just, um, Let's double click this layer again real quick. Let's bring out this layer tab and let's just zoom out so I can find it. Okay, there it is. One thing you can add is if, if I just grab the brush tool again, you can add decay like on the sides to kind of make it look pretty cool. So, so when I'm editing, I'm just going to turn this off and turn the glow off. And I'm just going to add one here, add one here. Let's go down one frame and let's add another bit of decay on the side. Just kind of add some some little accent I guess and uh, you don't have to do every single one and let's go here kind of go along with it and yeah so it kind of looks like it's got some motion and let's just take a quick look and see what that looks like if we close this let's just go back to the beginning so you see for a brief moment there you could you can see that stuff and maybe you want it maybe you don't just depends on what you want so also when you have an impact with something, if let's say it comes and hits them, you can add little debris on the side as well, just like I showed you with this over here. So that's also how you can add some debris. Sometimes it adds to some nice transitions. So let's just turn that back on, turn the glow on. I'm going to collapse that. Now one nice little trick you can do is if you press F4, you can toggle between these different settings. So if I click the shine tool here and I click it up here, it's going to hide that layer. The reason being why I would do that is because maybe I have this effect here and then I want to have another effect happening in the scene. So what I would do is I would unlock my background, duplicate the background again, lock that. I'll turn this green like I did before and then I'd make those edits there just like I did with the first one. Once I've done those edits, I can press F4. Whoops, there it is. And then click the shy and it'll hide it again. That way I don't have to get confused between the other layers and I keep each individual layer separate so that let's say I want to go back and say, oh, actually I want to change this one. I want to change the color. So let's change it to blue. I can change it to blue and it doesn't affect any of the other effects that I've added into the timeline here. So that's a good starter. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope it was very useful. So a pretty simple effect at its bare bones, it can get a little tedious, a lot of time is needed and practice to make it look good. 
But if you guys did enjoy, consider leaving a like, it would really help the channel out. If you're new around here, consider subscribing. Stick around for that, I do a lot of visual effects, editing, Premiere Pro, After Effects, streaming, um, PC setups, um, all that kind of stuff. I also live stream on Twitch, come say hi, I'd like to get to know you and just stick around, maybe say hi. Um, but until next time, remember, keep smiling, keep shooting. Got some meds for you. Oh, I'm going around. He's lit. Back, guys. No shield. Come on. Gotta get the guy that shoots next to the left. I'm a living legend. You ain't heard yet. You ain't heard yet. You ain't heard yet. You ain't heard Yo, we are destroying today, dude.